But that's enough, the Xbox One X. I'm sick and tired of talking about it at this point. It's like the fucking Russia of of video games. You know, all we hear about in fucking politics is Russia did this, Russia did that, Russian collusion this, Russian collusion that. Uh, all this fucking bullshit about Russia. It's either that or guns. So right now in gaming, the Xbox One X is all you hear about, which I guess makes sense because it just came out, but whatever. We've got a very troubling story that uh, just just came out from Take-Two. Now, this company has been involved with a lot of controversial shit lately. One of the biggest gaming stories of the summer was, of course, Take-Two taking legal action against modders and taking down mods from GTA Five and trying to completely remove modding altogether from GTA Five single player. Now, online made sense because, you, you know, you can't have mods online or whatever. Okay, fine. But single player? Th- that that was just fucked up, what they did with, with the mods, with fucking over the modding community. But this is very troubling. Very troubling news from Take-Two. And I hope people fucking take a stand against this shit. Okay. So this is from a conference call they had the other day on November 7th, 2017. So it's a bit dated. But I just heard about this now. I didn't I didn't know that this happened. But anyway, the big story is that Take Two plans to only release games with quote recurrent consumer spending hooks. Now when I saw Tyler's video, I knew exactly what they meant, but I read even more into it and it's pretty troubling. So on a conference call they had a few days ago, the chief of Take Two, Strauss Zelnick, had a few things to say to his investors about the direction that the company is taking, and it's not great. So here's a quote from him. The business, once upon a time, was a big, chunky opportunity to engage for tens of hours or perhaps a hundred hours, he said. That has turned into ongoing engagement. Day after day, week after week, you fall in love with these titles and they become part of your daily life. Now, that's a pretty accurate thing to say. With the rise of online gaming, it's gaming is becoming the, the the extendability of a game is now more than it ever has been. You can play a game much longer now than you ever could be, and I do think that that is a good thing. But notice what he suggested in that quote: that games were that that you can engage in for tens of hours or perhaps a hundred hours was obviously a direct reference to single player only games, right? Games that have a refined single-player experience, and that's what you get. He's pretty much saying that there's no place for those kind of games. But if you don't believe me, let's continue reading on to some more other things that he said. We've said that we aim to have recurrent consumer spending opportunities for every title that we put out at this company. It may not always be an online model. It probably won't always be a virtual currency model. But there will be some ability to engage in an ongoing basis with our titles after release across the board. That's a sea of change in our business. Recurrent consumer spending is 42% of our net bookings in the quarter. It's been transformative for us. So on paper, this sounds pretty good, right? That they're trying to extend the, the longevity of their games. What's, what could possibly be wrong with that? That's such a great thing. There are a lot of people that play a game and they get disappointed because they already beat the game and they're like, okay, what do I do now? I just spent $60 on this game. And yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with the fact that games should have longevity to them, that they should last as long as they possibly can. And I do think that having an online component of a game is good. But what scares me, especially with Red Dead Redemption 2 on the horizon, this probably is going to say a lot about what's going to happen with this game. It's pretty much going to be what happened with GTA 5. GTA 5 had the single player experience, which was good. GTA 5 had a great single player. I don't think anyone can deny that. Online, not so much. Uh, the online at first was, you know, was going strong, and then it just it got to the point where that if you did not pay money regularly into the game, then you had a very, very, very unfair advantage. You had people fi- flying fucking around with million-dollar jets that you couldn't buy in the game because you didn't have enough currency. So people were raining down on you in fucking jets and fucking tanks and all this other shit. And the only thing that they had that really had a payout was heists. But the only way that you can do heists is relying on the cooperation of other people online, which doesn't always work. Even when I played with my friends in real life, it, it didn't fucking work. 
There's just so much miscommunication with the heist. It's just, oh my god, don't even get me started with the online heist. The online heists, online heists, in my opinion, were a huge disappointment, especially since they they said it was supposed to come out when the when the D- GTA Online originally came out, but then they fucking delayed it for years and years and years and years and years, and it, it turned out to not be that great. So the fact that they pretty much confirmed that they plan on doing this for every single game that they release going forward. That's pretty fucking scary. Think about it. If they ever make a Bully 2, which seems more and more and more unlikely as the years go by, because it's been 11 years now and they haven't released a sequel to Bully, or if they decide to release another game kind of like L.A. Noir or some other game like that, it is going to have some kind of thing implemented in it that they're going to go out of their way to make sure that they can milk the fuck out of the consumer so they can get more money out of it. That's pretty much what they said. Now, some people are going to look at the part of the quote where it says, well, it's not going to always be in the form of online or in the form of virtual currency. Well, the only other way I can think of a system that tries to extend the longevity of a game without having virtual currency, a.k.a. microtransactions, is Season Pass. And do we really want a season fucking pass for games like GTA or Bully or fucking Red Dead Redemption? And yeah, the reason why I'm only referring to Rockstar games is because I really couldn't give less of a shit about any other game that 2K comes out with at this point. I don't care about NBA 2K. I don't care about whatever else they release under the Take-Two umbrella besides Rockstar games. Rockstar is has been one of my favorite developers. Maybe not recently, but... For, for years, Rockstar was one of my favorite developers. GTA San Andreas, Vice City. These are some of the most iconic games to ever be released. Imagine what they would have been like if they had this system in place where they were just they just went out of their way to make sure the game lasted forever and forever and forever and forever to make sure that they kept making money out of it. Imagine how different of a game San Andreas would have been if that was the case. Just imagine. I don't even want to imagine that. But... It seems to be a reality, and when it comes to Red Dead Redemption 2, I might have to make a video about that separately when it gets closer to the release, because we got until, like, what, May 2018? So I got some time to talk about that. I don't want to just... I I don't want to spend so much time talking about shit. I've spent enough time doing that today, right? But essentially, you should expect Red Dead Redemption 2 to be less than Red Dead Redemption and more like GTA 5. I think it's a pretty safe bet to assume that Red Dead Redemption 2's online is pretty much going to be GTA 5 with horses. So expect that to happen. Expect all the games that you know and love from Rockstar to have a dip in quality as a result of this because they're going to go out of their way. They're going to have to change some gameplay mechanics to make sure that they can make this a reality, that every single game going forward has some kind of DLC functionality or virtual currency or something like that. You're going to have to... It's going to negatively affect the quality of the game. Let's face it. That's going to happen. So that's not good because Rockstar was always the one developer that we could always count on to deliver a quality product to us. And now uh, now that might not be the case. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but considering the shit that they did over the summer with the modders and all of the anti-consumer shit that they've been uh, that they that they've been doing lately, I don't think I'm too wrong in this situation. I really don't. 